If you're interested in personal finance and investing related videos, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell notification. So let's talk about the best Vanguard funds for 2019. Now we're going to have some assumptions here. Uh, the first assumption is you're basically looking to simplify investing. You might not have the time or desire to select individual stocks. Now, my personal opinion is, you know, selecting individual stocks if that's what interests you, that's likely that's likely to lead to, you know, better overall returns for many individuals that put in the time and effort to learn how to do it properly. If you're looking for more of a hands-off approach, which many people are, you know, you have kids, you have a full-time job, maybe a full-time and part-time job, and you just don't have the time to spend to ad adequately research stocks, then investigating you know, low-cost ETF index funds or mutual funds may be the best approach for you. With these Vanguard funds, the goal here is to keep fees low, have a long-term mindset, and again, make sure you talk with an investment advisor this uh, I'm not an investment advisor so you know this isn't financial advice this is just something for you to consider when you do have that discussion with your financial advisor and again you can adjust this approach for your own risk tolerance and investment goals again this is something that your investment advisor should discuss with you so the first fund I'm going to talk about is the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF now this fund is basically, again, creating a, a relatively hands-off portfolio. The Vanguard Total World Stock ETF fund, uh, symbol VT, is, you know, it, it gives you two things, right? It gives you basically stock exposure that covers the whole world. So many ETFs will cover mostly U.S. stocks, and then you would need something else to cover the rest of the world. As you can see here, the portfolio composition of the Vanguard Total World uh, Stock Fund is basically, uh, you know, there's a large portion that is North America, so 58%, but it also covers Europe, the Pacific, Middle East, uh, and some emerging markets. So you get a wide swath of diversification across the world. Having a, a portfolio composition that, that encompasses the globe, basically different countries perform well at different times. Uh, you know, sometimes they do poorly at the same time, but generally speaking, when you look over history, there, there are times where, you know, stocks across the world do better than U.S. stocks. And again, there's times where the U.S. stock market does better than the world market as a whole. So this gets you both of those and you can catch, uh, you know, when one is doing better than the other, uh, you know, you, you have that covered. Uh, it just simplifies things, basically. If we're looking at uh, performance here, uh, you know, the 10 year uh, average for the total world uh, stock index is 8.5%. Since inception, it is 6.46%. So, you know, that, that's nothing great. But again, the, the U.S. stock market has been flying where the, you know, the global stock market hasn't been doing as well in, in recent history. So again, that, that impacts the stock. But again, you're getting exposure to both of those. Another benefit is there's a, a low overall expense ratio of 0.10%. Uh, and this is 91% lower than similar funds. Again, Vanguard generally has lower fees. So, you know, this is a, a great option for those individuals that are looking for lower fees because, again, that basically adds to your bottom line when you pay less fees. The fund also covers 8,000 stocks and it has a 2.34% dividend yield. So that's a, a fairly decent dividend yield uh, when it comes to ETF funds. So the second fund we're going to cover here is the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF fund. Generally, it's accepted that, you know, everybody invested in stocks have some type of bond exposure. There are, you know, different levels and percentages of exposure that you may want to have based on things like your risk tolerance, your age, things like that. So make sure you consult a financial professional to determine what percentage of your portfolio should be allocated to a bond fund or bond ETF in this case. So the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF, it covers, as you can see here, the composition is 
over 50%, 65% U.S. government bonds. And it also has bonds of different risk ratings, right, from AAA, which is less risky, to uh, BAA bonds that are more risky. And there's a 14.7% allocation to that. From a, a performance perspective, uh, since inception, this bond fund has returned 3.75%, which again, bonds are more to help stabilize the up and downs of your portfolio uh, and also provide some income exposure. Uh, and, and again, that, that touching on some of the benefits of this fund is you, know, you get broad exposure to US investment grade bonds, you get a reliable income stream, and it diversifies some of the risk of being in an all stock portfolio. As you know, right now we're going through a period of volatility, you know, in late December 2018, where the stock market is, you know, from day to day, it's swinging up and down. Having exposure to bonds helps cushion or smooth this swinging somewhat. So when you know, when you're deciding on a portfolio composition, you know, if you're older, generally the, the recommended position there is to have more exposure to bonds. Uh, this will provide more income generally over uh, an all stock portfolio. And it'll, again, it'll also smooth out some of the volatility that can be experienced if you have a 100% equity portfolio. This next slot here is kind of, it's kind of like the wild card slot. So in my personal retirement portfolio, I like having some exposure to real estate. So I added the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, uh, symbol VNQ. As you can see here, um, you know, there, there's basically every kind of REIT or real estate investment trust that uh, is presented to us in the market, right? You got everything from diversified real estate activities to healthcare REITs, to hotel and resort REITs, to, uh, you know, residential REITs. So it, it covers all different kind of REITs in, in the, and basically how I look at this slot is, you know, if you want exposure to real estate, add a REIT fund here. If you want an ex exposure to, say, natural resources, you can add a natural resource fund here. You may, you know, have a, another slot on top of this one and have exposure to REITs as well as a natural resource fund. Basically, this is kind of that slot that is not just part of, you know, total world stock market index fund where, you know, there, there's all kind of different equities and it's not part of, you know, a bond market fund. My personal portfolio, I like having the income that REITs present. As you can see here, the VNQ has around a 4.23% yield. So that provides, you know, a, a decent income stream that uh, of a yield that you're not going to get with you know the the total world stock market index fund so with that said moving on to the next slide here you know there's adjustments you can make to this portfolio this is kind of the core portfolio that of somebody who wants you know hands off low fee funds my personal portfolio my personal retirement portfolio is set up pretty much like this uh, I can't in, in my employer's retirement fund, I can't invest in individual stocks or else I probably would. I have funds that are outside of my retirement accounts that are in individual stocks. And like I said, I prefer that. But, you know, some potential adjustments you can make here is, you know, if you're a younger individual, you may not want to have bond exposure. That's something you have to discuss, you know, uh, you know with your significant other, with your financial professionals, decide if that's right for you. Uh, and you may not want global stock exposure, so you may get rid of the total world uh, stock, stock market ETF, and you may want something like a Vanguard S&P 500 or you know, a Vanguard growth ETF, something like that, that doesn't have exposure to the whole world. So basically, you know, this is just kind of a simple portfolio, something to consider. It's, it's not the only one by far. It's not necessarily going to have the best returns. Again, this is a long-term mindset, low fees, decent income, kind of cover all your bases and keep it simple. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. And don't forget, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe.